Ayo hey, LAZ, make sure you check out that new story from Black Knowledge. You heard it's called Grape Street Crips Started a Riot. Comment gang that up. LAZ, make sure you check out that top 50 St. Laz Stories and Interviews playlist. You heard it's heavy. The numbers is heavy on that. If you serious out there about starting your own YouTube channel and you need watch time, subscribers, and views to get monetized, get at me. I got exclusive content for lease that you can use to build up your channel. DM me on Instagram at Real St. Laz or send me an email at thegempopllc at gmail.com. Dementio was the first dude that took you out of town? Yeah, he the first one. He took me to um, Baltimore. Yeah, he took me to Baltimore, Missy. Yeah. He ain't tell me nothing. One day he just said, yo, he said, yo, what you doing? I said, I ain't doing nothing, man. He said, get in the car. He had a couple of other dudes in the car with him. I got in the car with him. We drive. I said, where we going? He said, where we going to Baltimore? I said, all right. We, these places, we stopped on Delancey Street. We had stopped on... I thought I was from the hood until I seen Brooklyn. Jesus Christ. I got off the train. I said, is this the book of Eli? What happened? I feel you. Ayo, hey, LAZ, download two of my greatest albums that I ever put out in my life on my Patreon right now. As above, so below, and blue skies. Free download on my Patreon. Join today. And he start talking to me like, yo, what's good, son? Where you from, B? Aha. So I tells the nigga, I said, fam, I know you ain't come here to talk to me, my nigga. Just do what you're supposed to do. And he took a step in my cell. When he took the second step of my cell, I jumped off the bed and popped on him. I pushed him. So I back up. The police like, yo, everybody lock in. Everybody lock in because they blew up the spot. You know what I'm saying? With all the cursing me out at my cell. The police like, everybody lock in. Everybody lock in. They locking niggas in. The officer came up to me. He like, yo, you Latin King or something? I said, nah, B, I'm just a lonely Puerto Rican in the wrong house, dog. You know what I'm saying? My first time on the island was July 2nd of 1998. Girl, I was 18 years old, my first time in the island. Now, it wasn't my first arrest, but I was on bail in this program called the Fortune Society. And then for for disbursement of a firearm and reckless endangerment in the Bronx, they gave they tried to give me like this anger management that thing. They said if I do the program, Fortress Society, if I, I, if I could successfully complete 12 months, they was gonna give me five years probation. But what happened was while I was going to that program, I was with my homegirl Cool Cat going to the Lower East Side of Manhattan selling cribs. So I sold to an undercover July 2nd of 98. You know what I'm saying? And they took me to the island for that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, man. That was my first time. I didn't think it was that serious until then. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you hit the precinct. You know what I'm saying? Then you go to 100 Center Street. You feel me? All that was a brand new experience. My first arrest, I went through the bookings, but I was in and out. I got bailed out the same day. You know what I'm saying? This time, you know, back in the days, I don't know how they do it now, but back in the days, if you had two open cases on the second one, they wouldn't grant me no bail because I, you know what I'm saying? I, I played myself catching the second one. I was out on bail going to the program. So when I caught the second one, they wouldn't grant me a bail. So I went from the 100 Center Street to the island. You know what I'm saying? And I still remember, like, the distinct smell. Like, you feel me? Even to this day, I could tell you that Rikers Island got its own aura, son. You know what I'm saying? Like, its own odor and shit. You feel me? I don't yeah. know if you recognize that before. But when yeah, I yeah. guess there, you want me to just roll and tell you the whole shit? Yeah, 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 you flowing. So when I get there, when I get to, you know, after the bookings, you know what I'm saying? I experienced that once before, but now I get to the island. When I get to the island, the first, you know, we in the bullpens, whatever, whatever. Then they grab me, you know what I'm saying? They call my name, send me to Mall 4 lower. You know what I'm saying? When I get to Mall 4, it was quiet for me, son. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I thought I was a goonie in the street. I thought I was tough, bro. But that was now I'm starting to question it. Like, yo, what am I doing here? You know what I'm saying? Like, this for real. 
So when I get to Mark Four Low, I meet Columbia, but we ain't really talk. He was just in the bed next to me. You know what I'm saying? The next morning, it was late when I got there, so it was already like one or two in the morning when I hit the four building. And when I got to the housing unit, so in the morning, you know, we used to go to the lunch, back to the mess hall. And for breakfast, we went to the mess hall. That was a new experience for me. I saw, you know, I start seeing, you know what I'm saying, how I work in the mess hall. You know, it was it, it, it was lit. But when I get back to, when I get back to the housing unit, this kid came up to me. Kid from Sandview, his name was Eddie Bauer. You heard Latin King brother, you know what I'm saying? He like, yo, where you from, fam? I talked from the Bronx, he from the Bronx too, we kicking it, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? He took a liking to me, he was Latin King. You know, you had a couple of bloods, you had a bunch of Latin Kings, you had like one Crip kid, you heard, named T-Rock from, I think he was from Queens, I, I, I can't tell you for sure. But um, we in there, my first friend was Eddie Bauer. He's important to this story because he the one who got me in all the messes I wound up getting into in the four building. You feel me? I was on some chill, chill out shit, not looking for no kind of smoke. One night, after I'm there for like four, five, maybe three or four days, I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Now, you remember how the, the stalls in the bathroom ain't had no doors? Niggas used to throw a sheet over the shit, right? Yeah. Well, some kid, well, I'm, walk, I'm walking to go take a piss. I passed a couple of stalls or whatever. And it was a nigga sitting there taking a shit. Now, it's late. I ain't know nobody was in there. So the realization that there was something on the side made me look at him, you heard? I ain't trying to look at niggas taking shit. But, you know, my, my, my peripheral caught something to the right of me. So I looked. So I think that shit pissed that nigga off. You know what I'm saying? I kept walking. I pissed. I'm washing my hands. He come out. He washing his hands next to me. You heard? My nigga... I more, I felt the vibe, like, yo, something about to pop on me or something, you know what I'm saying, because I see him take a doo-doo, you heard, but he ain't pop on me, I walked out the bathroom, and he followed me a little bit, but something made him change his mind, so when I got back to my bed, and it was late, but you know, niggas used to still be up, sometimes even walking around and all that, we had the CO, the, the Spanish lady CO, she was on the, she was at the desk, she used to be sleeping and shit, you feel me? And whoever was in the bubble doing their job, but the one that was sitting on this used to be sleep, so we ain't worried about her. So homie followed me a little bit, but he changed his mind. So when I got back to my bed, Eddie Bauer came up to me like, yo, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good, but what happened? He like, nah, I ain't like that. He saw it. He saw the whole shit when I came out the bathroom. So he went up to the dude. He was like, yo, watch my back. So I'm like, oh, shit, this nigga gonna take it to a level I don't really care to take it to. You know what I'm saying? So he woke up to son. He's talking with his hands, whatever, told fam to play the Dave room. So I walk towards the Dave room, but I don't go inside of it because he told me, yo, just watch out for the police. So they go in the Dave room. I don't know if you remember Mark for Lower. The Dave room had the window, like, you know what I'm saying? You could look in it, you heard? Yeah. So I'm looking in the window, and these niggas throw their hands up. Fam, he tall, skinny black brother. He was kind of muscular, but he was slim. He take a swing. At Eddie Bauer, Eddie Bauer weaved it, picks him up, scoop, bow, slams him on his neck. I'm like, damn, this nigga, that shit hurt. But he let homie, he let homie get up. Homie took another swing. Eddie Bauer did it again. We grab, slams the kid. Uh, I'm looking at the, the sun is rock. His whole world is shook up. Uh, you could tell he wobbly. So Eddie Bauer grab him by the arm and sit him on a chair. He talking to him. I don't know what he said. But it looked like he said, don't play with that kid no more, whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? So that was my first, that was my very first, like, being involved in anything. But I ain't even the one who popped. I ain't had to. You feel me? But what happened was, when that shit happened, you know what I'm saying, all the young blood kids, I guess homie was blood. They thought I was Latin King because Eddie Bauer did that shit. You heard? So now everybody thinking I'm, you know, they was wondering if I was Larry King. They had this little chubby kid. I, he was from the Bronx too, but I don't remember his name. He used to hang out with this nigga named Dewey. Dewey from the Bronx too. Dewey was a was a weirdo. Uh, but the other kid, the chubby kid, I guess he was blood. Maybe like a maybe like five days go by, and son want to play with the hands out of nowhere. He trying to touch me like you know what I'm saying. He wanted a slap box, you know, being silly. I popped on that kid. That shit got me in a world full of trouble, son. When I popped on that kid, the police came out the bubble. They broke it up. They snatched me up. They sent me to the box. 
And the tear hearing, they only gave me 10 days. When I get to the box, you know what I'm saying? Indio from West Burnside in the box. I knew him from the streets. I didn't know he was in the island at the time. I'm still new here. Like, I'm not even a whole 10 days in. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm in the box. He's shooting me the Latin King lesson. Like, yo, join with us, son. Because, you you know, I don't know I don't know how it happens, but word gets around fast in jail. You know what I'm saying? From porters, from SPAs. I don't know how we get around so fast. But when I got to the box, they was already telling me I had smoke with blood kids. I ain't want that shit, dog. I ain't want no problems with the bloods. You know what I'm saying? But since I beat fam up, I guess now I got a problem. That's two blood kids and two Puerto Ricans beat them up. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and less than 10 days, I'm on the island. So he tried to pass me the lessons. I told Indio, I said, I don't want to be in no gang. I just want to do whatever time they're going to give me. And I want to go home. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, at least read that shit. You never know when you're going to need it. Ah, uh-huh. I read the shit. I sent it back. We used to do what they call fishing. You know what I'm saying? Flatten out the toothpaste, whatever. Throw it, t- throw some line on it from the blanket. You know what I'm saying? Fish shit back and forth in the four building. Uh, that's where I learned it for the first time. I come out the box though, and Officer Cologne with the with the lazy eye, he's the transit officer. You heard? This one I knew was really real. Like what they were saying to me for those ten days. Like when I get out of here, I was fooled. Cause some other niggas called me fooled or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I was like, ah, whatever, son. When I come out the box, Officer Cologne, he's the transportation officer. He taking me to the thing. He know my family in the Bronx. So he like, yo, you think you tough, shorty, you know what I'm saying? I'ma make sure you never come back to Rutgers Island. I'ma make this shit horrible for you. You ain't never gonna wanna come back. I'm like, damn, son, it's like that. You know, I thought he would look out for me because he's from Parkside, like me. You know, I'm from Parkside Projects in the Bronx. So was Cologne. So, I, you know, instead of looking out for me, he said, you know what I'ma do? I'ma send you to the worst houses. That nigga sent me the three main, son, you heard? At the time, you had Ali Mo was running a house Ali Mo from Harlem with the dead eye, blood kid, scary motherfucker too. I don't know if you, you ever seen him. Excuse my language, scary dude. Yo, you know there's the A and B gate when they take me there, right, to give him my card. You know there's the A and B gate, like in, in between before you get into the house and every other, that little space in between. Yeah. On the side of it, you can see the day room. It got like a little gate. Yo, man, niggas came to the gate. Ali Mo came to the gate. He like, yo, you sure you want to come in here? I'm like, I ain't really got no choice. I thought it, but I ain't say nothing. I just looked to the side and saw all them kids at the gate being nosy. I said, this ain't a good look. I don't think this is going to end well. You know what I'm saying? So, but there's no checking in. You know what I'm saying? You in jail, you feel me? You got to do whatever you get. What happens is what happens in jail. You got to go with it. You heard? I ain't no rap. So I said, damn, son, they told me that the office is like, yo, you got 14, son. Like, all right. I don't even unpack my shit, lads, you heard? I ain't even unpack. I felt the vibe. I said, these niggas is gonna wash me up in here, son. I'm sitting in my cell just waiting. The gate open, too. I had that shit open. I, I figured to myself, there's no way out of this. You know what I'm saying? If I slam, you know, if, if, if I check in, I'm a bird. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna have to take these lumps and bumps. I know they coming sooner or later. You feel me? So I'm nervous, I ain't gonna lie. And I don't care what a nigga say, when you about to get jumped by a bunch of adolescents that you don't know, that shit was nerve-wracking. I'm sitting on my bed, but I wouldn't make my bed, and I ain't unpacked a little bit of stuff I had. This one kid keep passing my cell, he keep looking in. So the more he look in, the more I realize he the doja, they gonna send him in here first. You know what I'm saying? He just trying to get comfortable. Because he would walk past my cell looking, Walk past again, looking. Then he stopped and put his hand like above himself, like on a on a cell. But it's it's not a cell. It's like a gate, like a door. So he put his hand on, like you know what I'm saying, on the frame, and he start talking to me. He like, yo, what's good, son? Where you from? Be aha. So I tells the nigga, I said, fam, I know you ain't come here to talk to me, my nigga. Just do what you're supposed to do. And he took a step in my cell. When he took the second step of my cell, I jumped off the bed and popped on him. I pushed him out the cell when I slammed the door. You know what I'm saying? I got like two hits off, pushed him and slammed the door. As soon as that shit slammed, 
mad teenagers, be 16, 17, 18 year old kids, was at my gate barking, cursing me out. You could feel the energy. I walked to the back of the cell like, oh shit, just in case that shit opened back up for some reason. I'm new to this, you feel me? So I back up, the police like, yo, everybody lock in, everybody lock in, because they blew up the spot. You know what I'm saying? With all the cursing me out at my cell. So the police like, everybody lock in, everybody lock in, they locking niggas in. The, car, the officer came up to me, he like, yo, you Latin King or something? I said, nah, B, I'm just a lonely Puerto Rican in the wrong house, dog. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, yo, you shit not unpacked? I said, hell no. You know what I'm saying? He's like, all right, just stay right there. They moved me. So they moved me to another housing unit, but it's been so long, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a dorm, like bed, like a bed, like a kind of like Mar 4, lower, you know what I'm saying? As soon as I get in there, I felt it again. I'm like, damn, yo, they rolling me bad dice. You know, I'm Puerto Rican, but I look black to them. So I don't mind being looking black. I'm from the Bronx. I love black people, but they keep putting me in blood houses. So they took me from one blood house, put me in another blood house. So I was uncomfortable. I didn't make it 10 minutes in me. I just went through that situation. I stood about an hour or two in the wild meat pens. Then they put me in the next housing unit where it was nothing but a bunch of young blood kids. So I'm standing by, I'm, I'm watching niggas talk on the phone. You know what I'm saying? I don't really want to go to, I don't really want to go to my bed, none of that. I'm like, nah, I got to get the fuck up out of here. You know what I'm saying? So I see kids talking on the phone. One kid talk, he looked like he was my size. He's skinny nigga like me. I ain't know what to do, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I did a sucker move. I did. You know what I'm saying? And I, to me, it's a sucker move now. But back then, it wasn't a sucker move to me. You heard? I was uncomfortable. So the kid was talking on the phone. I went and popped on him right in front of the police. And everything is called pulling a stunt. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I felt... I, yo, son, I was in there for no... For, Maybe 10, 15 minutes. Mad uncomfortable, you heard? But I wasn't trying to show niggas that shit. And son that I popped on, he ain't never did nothing to me in, my, in his life. He ain't probably ain't even deserved it, you feel me? He ain't even seen it coming. But I saw the police come out, and I mean, came into the into the unit with us. I seen him, and I said, yo, if I pop on this nigga, the cop gonna snatch me up. You know what I'm saying? And they gonna move me again. I told myself already at that time, I said, I'm gonna keep doing this until they put me somewhere where I could just rock. You know what I'm saying? So I did it, boom. That's when them niggas wind up taking me to a Spanish block with nothing but mad Puerto Ricans in it. You feel me? After that, I went back to the Wami Pins. Then I went to 12 something. It's been a long time where I met the nigga Cisco. Now, they asked me to be a king because niggas knew a couple of niggas that knew me from the Bronx that was king was like, yo, crown that nigga Little Mikey. I didn't want to be in the gang, so I just wanted to go. I just wanted to do my time and go home. You feel me? I didn't want to be rep nothing. I told niggas, nah, I don't want to do that. I'm good, good looking out, but I ain't. You know what I mean, nigga, like, yo, but sure, you popping. These niggas is going to get at you. They're going to keep getting at you for whatever you did more for. They're going to keep getting at you. I said, they just won't have to get at me. I don't want to be in no gang. But what made me change my mind is Cisco said, we went, he gave me the lessons again to read them. When I had read them, it, it sounded revolutionary, you feel me? It sounded like some real Puerto Rican pride revolution shit. So I, I, that really piqued my interest, because before I only read the one through tens, but now I got like one through 26 with oaths and history lessons and all that. So that shit sounded kind of cool to you. I was like, yo, this shit sounds like some real, you know what I'm saying? Body was on a set shit. And I always been into that shit, you know what I mean? So I didn't do it. What made me, made me do it is after I read those lessons, one day, the next morning, we go into the yard. Now, I don't, I, it was another housing unit coming out of their shit, too. And there was this kid trying to catch up to me. I could feel the nigga. I could feel homeboy trying to catch up to me. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know how to explain it. I just felt it coming, something bad about to happen. So, I turned around, and I seen the kid who was all the way in the back of the line. Now, he in the middle of the line. You know what I'm saying? This nigga's coming, son. But I made it to the yard door. When I came out, God is real. When I came out into the yard and I looked to the left, we was with the adults now because I had turned 19. So we with the adults, you know what I'm saying? So 
were well, in the yard, had the adults and all that. There was some adolescents too, but it was mostly all adults at that time. So when I came out, rest in peace, the homie Pow Wow was in the yard. And I seen him. And I know him from the Bronx. You feel me? I don't know him, know him. But he'd be around Sim Blood, Juanis, niggas from 169 and Franklin and shit. I used to be around there. I went to Morris High School with these niggas. You know what I'm saying? So when I seen Pow Wow, he seen me too. He like, yo, come here, son. So I walked up to him. The kid that was following me changed his mind when he saw Pow Wow pull me. I'm like, oh shit, I just weaved out when I think this nigga trying to eat my food or something. You know what I'm saying? So I went and pull up, start talking to Pow Wow. He like, yo, you little Mikey from my eye. I'm like, yeah, son, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? We talking, whatever, we vibing. And on the other side where all the Puerto Ricans was, the King niggas was, was my nigga him. So I see him too. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I'll be right back. So I go holler at him. I'm like, yeah, pull up. So he like, yo, you crazy? I'm like, nah, I ain't no king. He thinking I'm king because my grandmoms and them. He know me from my grandmoms hood in West Bronxside. And all them niggas we knew was Latin king. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, nah, I'm not king. Be like, yo, you rocking with us tonight? He said, you stay over here, though. I don't want to see you, you know what I'm saying, over there with them niggas no more. I'm like, all right. I chill with these niggas. When I got back to my dormitory, I mean, when I got back to 12 lower, whatever, 12 main, 12 lower, whatever that unit was with Cisco and them niggas, I had the lessons. He told me to throw the lessons away when I'm done reading them because you can't get caught with those, right? I still had them. So I went and talked to Cisco. I'm like, yo, fuck it, Cisco. I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? He like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, say no more. You feel me? Niggas took me into the bathroom, a bunch of Lion King niggas said a prayer over me. You feel me? Started talking, you know, and next thing you know, I'm on the hey, ah, everybody started cheering me on. You feel me? I'm, that was my introduction into the Latin Kings. You know what I'm saying? My first time on the island. From there, from there, that's when my birthday came, August 3rd. So now I'm there moment. When my birthday came, they sent me to OBCC. Like the same day of my birthday. You know, they said, Buff, pack up. Yo, you going somewhere? I'm like, where I'm going? They sent me to Overly Span of Correction to Population. When I get the population there, Eric Ritchie and myself Smooth, a.k.a. Omar Robinson, they deported back to Jamaica. But he was from Jamaica, but I know these three niggas from, from elementary school in the Bronx. I know these niggas my whole life. They was all in the building together. Eric and Richie was in the same house together, but Omar, he was in another housing unit, but I seen them all these niggas in the yard. So Richie pulls me over, he knew a police. You know, back in the days, you get niggas pulled over to your unit if you got props. So he got me pulled over to his unit. When I get to his unit, the nigga Omar, he came to the, to the window one day and he passed me half a pair of scissors, son. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how he got it to me. I don't know how he got it through there. But I'm an amateur. And I got a motherfucking half a pair of, you know, those industrial scissors. I don't know what to call them. Them big, bulky shits. But I don't know where he got that shit from. My dumb ass, you know what I'm saying? I had that shit for like three, four days. I put that shit right under my, I put that shit in the mattress, you heard? And they did a, and they did a search. You heard? I'm an amateur. I'm stupid amateur. I ain't know what to do with that shit. Now, before that happened, though, I seen a wedding. The Nieta niggas was marrying some nigga from the Bronx, too, man. I was embarrassed. But the Nietas had some Spanish kid get married in the yard. And we was all clowning them niggas. Because even though they was deep, you know what I'm saying? A lot of us wasn't with that weird shit that they used to be on. You know what I'm saying? Like, now nah, we clown that shit. But anyway, now I'm in my cell. And... There's a, there's a fucking big ass raid, oh, waking everybody up. I was off guard. So I got caught with those pair of scissors. You know what I'm saying? They gave me a red ID card and they threw me in the box for 60 days. You heard? So now I got this time in the box. I'm still not sentenced yet. You heard? I wound up getting, I wound up getting sentenced from the box. They gave me a year, run two two years, but running concurrent. So two bullets, but running concurrent. So instead of a year, I could go home in eight months if I don't catch, if I don't lose none of the good time. You heard? Mm-hmm. I do my 60 days in the box. I go to population and see 76. Nigga, the box was lit, though. I'm not even going to lie. That shit made me a fan of the Bloods. They used to have that shit called the Roll Call. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you ever heard it before. You know what I'm saying? When they, every night, like 9.30, 10 o'clock at night or some shit, niggas, everybody get out there at the gate, start singing blood songs and shit. My nigga, after like a month of that shit, I started singing them shits too. I wasn't even blood. It was just hip hop in my veins. That shit was like real hip hop to me. You know, who's that nigga with the razor? The East Side Blood Burger. And that shit was intriguing to me. You feel me? I started getting intrigued by all of this shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I already done popped. I already done survived this far. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm singing blood songs. Now I'm getting sense going to the sixth building. By the time I got to the sixth building, and I was comfortable because I knew I was going home in March. They set me a date to go home March 2nd, 99. You know what I'm saying? So from July to March 2nd, 99, I, I was going home. So I was like, ah, right, fuck it. A lot of niggas say, though, that the sixth building sweet. But they tend to forget that there's still a bunch of grown-ass criminals in there, too. You know what I'm saying? Niggas that done did mad time before. Now they just got a little scared, babe, getting high, whatever. It was a lot of dope things, though. Was a lot of dope fiends in the sixth building back then, 1998. You know what I'm saying? And dope was heavy in there. You know? I get to the sixth building, I meet King Soap, Blaze, Bello, Red, a whole bunch of niggas that I still love to this day, even though Soap got murdered. You feel me? It's my very first bid. When I get there, they send me to this one housing unit. I'm with Blaze, Bello, Mo, and this kid named Control. You heard? Just a there's five of us, Puerto Rican kids. We was all pretty young. I'm 19. These niggas like maybe 20, 21, 23, around that age. We all around the same age. You know what I'm saying? I'm one of the younger ones, though. You heard? We in this shit. And um, there's this kid. His name was Bruno. He was black. He used to wash the greens for a pack of cigarettes. So a shirt and a pair of pants is a pack of cigarettes. He'll wash them. You know what I'm saying? He was in a chunk. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't doing, like, it wasn't like niggas was making them wash clothes. It was his hustle. So I'm there chilling. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got too much longer to go home. You know what I'm saying? But I got there in July. It's like September. You know what I'm saying? Now going into October. So I don't got that much time left. I tells the nigga, yo, I got a pack. I got two packs for two sets. So the nigga like, all right, cool. So I gave him the two sets of greens. But the nigga just left him in the bucket for mad long. So I, every time I went to the bathroom, I see my shit in the bucket. This nigga's over there playing spades and playing up whatever the game they was playing at the tables where they, where they used to chill. So I was like, yo, you know what? I should just wash them shits myself and get my packs back. You uh -huh. But when I went to ask the nigga to give me my packs back, I was like, yo, fam, how long you gonna leave these clothes in the bucket, fam? He was like, yo, he was like, yo, Fuck out of here, son. I got you. Don't worry about it. I'm like, nah, nah. Do me a favor, man. Just give me the packs back. I'll wash them myself. He like, yo, I ain't giving you shit, dog. And the way he talked to me was like he was trying to back me down. You heard? So my pride got in. I, I ain't like the way that shit felt. You know what I'm saying? So I stores on him. He start fighting. I don't know. If this There's like this leg that's from the floor to the ceiling, like a beam or some shit in the middle with the abs, you know what I'm saying? Like, separates like the abs from the, you know, how the beds go or whatever. I don't know how to explain it. But I pushed his face into it, and his face, his cheeks split open. They thought I cut him, but when I'm beating him up, all the brothers, the, the Puerto Rican kids came, so the, so the brothers thought there was some racial shit. They thought we was jumping them. We wasn't jumping them. The whole house went crazy, last. You hear me? The whole house went crazy. Now it's Puerto Rican niggas and black brothers. You know what I'm saying? We went at each other. I, I don't be on no racial shit. Somebody thought we was on some racial shit because the Puerto Ricans did jump the gun instead of letting me have the one up with the son. You feel me? When he was already losing, these niggas jumped up all crazy, cursing and talking. Yeah, yeah, what up, what up? You know what I'm saying? And the whole shit lit on fire. I caught a new one. They thought I cut him, but I ain't cut him. It was the corner of that beam shit that his face hit. You heard? So they took us, they took all, they took me, Bello, Blaze, and Mo, and, and that kid Control. They took all of us to the six building box. Ghostface Killer was there, but he was in protective custody. So he wasn't a box inmate, but he was on the other side because they wanted to keep him in there because he was a celebrity or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? That's 98. It was involuntary. I ain't never speak to the brother, though. 
but he was there. Everybody knew he was there. Niggas was shouting him out from down the table and all that, trying to talk to him. I'm all the way in the front. I never got to talk to him, and I never really cared to. You know what I'm saying? Even though I love Ghostface, you feel me? He doing his time. I'm stressed out because the next day after that situation had happened, the 41st Precinct came to my, to, to my cell. And they rearrested me for gang assault. Now, they never found no razor. You know what I'm saying? They, they was under investigation. They came. Gang intelligence came first. They took me out of my cell. They took all of us out of our cells one at a time. They stripped me down to my boxes, started taking pictures of my tattoos. You know what I'm saying? I only have one at the time, but they was, like, taking pictures of any scars I might have. And they put me in the SRG list, which means security risk group. You feel me? Because I asked them, yo, what's this? He's like, yo, you FRG. I'm like, damn, son, I'm 19 years old now, and I don't know what the fuck that means. I'm learning as I go along. Uh, then the 41st precinct came. They took me to the Bronx. They took me to the... They, they rearrested me, took me to the bookings. Now I'm looking at a gang of so I don't know what, the, what they're going to do with me. But after a couple of... After like a month of that shit, going, I went, the second time I went to a court, my lawyer like, you could get misdemeanor. You know what I'm saying? So, we in court, though. Now, mind you, I'm Red ID. I don't know why they did this. I'm Red ID for getting caught with the half a pair of scissors. But every time I went to court with these niggas, they put me in a cell with these niggas. Niggas took my mittens off. You heard? I only went to court twice, though, for this shit from the island. So, I'm in there with my codees because they all got arrested for gang assault. It was, but we wound up getting a misdemeanor. My son, Wayno, from Davidson, and his other brother, they was blood. They came to our cell one day on the second trip. So when they came in our cell, there was nothing but Puerto Ricans in there. These two blood kids coming. Hmm. Wayno wasn't my man, my man, but he was he was cool with my peoples from my building. So I wasn't finna let nothing happen to him, not for no blood king shit. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't really like on it like that. But I wanted to just jump niggas and all that. But the Spanish kids in my clique, they speaking in Spanish. They're like, yo, let's jump these niggas. I'm, I was trying to run. I'm telling them niggas in Spanish now, but I did do it, so yo, fall back. You know what I'm saying? These are my people from the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? Blaze from Brooklyn, he don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Bellows from around my hood somewhere too, but he was a lame old. He only popped when he got the numbers. He wasn't really built. You know what I'm saying? Control from Jersey, but he came to New York, got his dumb ass locked up. And M.O. from the Bronx too, but I didn't really know him. You know what I'm saying? Only knew he was Puerto Rican and he got in trouble with me. You know what I'm saying? So I tell them niggas in Spanish, now nah, don't do that, you know what I'm saying? And the police, a Spanish cop, he was, he was close enough to hear. He heard us talking or whatever. He came and he took those two brothers out. Because I was talking to him, like, yo, what up, kid? Ah, ah. Then I heard them niggas say that sneaky shit. So I turned around and spoke to them niggas too. So I guess the officer, Spanish officer, you know, he understood what we were saying. So he took Wayno and his man out to the cell with us. So when he did that shit, the nigga Blaze got in my face like, yo, we fucking worried about these tomate niggas, you know what I'm saying? We folding for these niggas. I, I told the nigga, get out of my face and chill, fam, you know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta go home and live with these niggas. You just wanna jump them for wreck. He wanted to jump them for recreation. They ain't do nothing to us, you know what I'm saying? That's how I was seeing it. Like, and these niggas from my, around my way. I gotta go home and live around these niggas, you know what I'm saying? So... We start arguing. This nigga wouldn't get out my face. You know what I'm saying? I stalled on the nigga. We start tussling and we fighting. We heard the other niggas broke it up. Yo, chill, y'all niggas just money You know what I'm saying? Huh? Anyway, long story short, we get in front of the judge and we all got um, time served for gang assault in the third degree, which they said was a misdemeanor. You feel me? If we just take the plea right now, they're going to send us back to the island like nothing happened. I said, I'm with that. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't want a new one. I ain't want to keep coming to court. So I just copped out to it. So that shit on my record too, right? We go back to the box for a little while. I can't remember how long it was, but I think it was like 60 for that too, because when I came out, I only had like a month and some change, maybe two months left to go home. So when I come out the box from that, these niggas got out the box earlier in the day from me, you heard? I was like the last nigga to hit population from the whole set. When I got there, they had already told King Token all the big homies in the building that I violated Blaze. That was the story they was pushing. They only told they narrative. They part of the story, though. They didn't care about me. You know what I'm saying? They just cared about catching rep. So when I get to the when I get to the building and Choke see me, he like, yo, play the yard. 
I'm like, all right, no doubt. So the lunchtime yard, after the lunchtime yard came, I go play the yard. When I get there, these niggas is like, yo, you want to put your hands on the handball court? You, you get in the physical. I'm like, what I'm getting the physical for? So he tell this nigga side of the story, right? I'm like, nah, that's that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? You only hear one side of the story, and y'all niggas is gonna hit me, nigga? I was new to this Latin King shit, you heard? I'm like, nah, I ain't doing that, you heard? And I started backing away from the table. There was this nigga, uh, 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 Bebo or some shit like that. Brolic. You know the niggas that be brolic, but they be fat at the same time? Them hard-hitting looking niggas? Mm -hmm. They was telling me he going through the physical. I'm like, oh, hell no. This nigga not putting this in. I'm 160 pounds. I'm a little nigga at the time. I'm like, oh, hell no. That nigga not putting his hands on me. You know what I'm saying? So I start backing up like, yo, y'all niggas touch me and I'm a, I'm a wild out. So so Red and the other older niggas, they was like, yo, chill, relax. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I said, nah, that's not fair. You took this nigga's story and you ran with it. You ain't even hear my side of the story. You feel me? So I'm bugging out. Like, nah, fuck that. Y'all niggas ain't touching me, dog. I ain't with that shit. You know what I mean? So they took me for a spin around the yard. They're like, yo, let me hear your side of the story. So when, they, when we walked around, I gave them my version of the story. So we both caught a violation. <laughs> but we ain't get a physical. We had to put $50 in the car high. You know what I'm saying? They wanted $50 in the car high. You know what I'm saying? I made that shit happen when my people's in the Bronx. Like, all right, I'll do that. But y'all not putting your hands on me. You know what I'm saying? So we did that shit. Then so brings me to his side of the, he brings me to 12th Main in the 6th building. We in the 6th building right before I go home, son. You know who was there too that I thought was pretty cool? Uh, From the Black Moon, that kid five foot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was there. He was in 12th Main with me, son. Five foot was official. He was a cool nigga, but he wound up going home. Plus this kid that I used to have beef with in the Bronx was there too, but we was cool in jail. You know what I'm saying? He said, he, he told me we'll finish whatever when we go home, nigga. But he was a joking. You know what I'm saying? Angel Rivera, if you hear this, man, God bless you, right? And um, I'm in there with Choke, Geronimo. When they pulled me over to that side, like, like a day or two later, I would Choke, Geronimo, Viejo Indio, rest in peace, Chuleta. You know what I'm saying? Bunch of Spanish. It was a lot of Spanish niggas in the house. It was a lot of brothers, too. There was this one kid. I don't know what his name is, though. He's from the LB family out of Queens. You heard? I don't know if you ever heard of them niggas, but the Lost Boys, not just a rap group. It's like these niggas be in jail and shit. You know what I'm saying? Bunch of these niggas. So this one lost boy kid, he used to chill with Top Dog and all the blood kids that was in that housing unit. You know what I'm saying? And um, he grabbed the Spanish phone one day and Choke went to talk to him about it. The nigga got rah rah with Choke. So Choke smacked the nigga with the Walkman. Remember the see-through Walkmans? Yeah. They used to buy in, 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 on the island back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever had one. I never owned one myself neither, but I seen niggas used to have that shit. He smacks the nigga with the walk when the shit shatters. Why he do that for? Son spinning around mad dizzy and everybody, yo. It's like the whole house on one side of the whole house try to pop on choke. So I jump in the middle and we fight our asses off. It's about five Latin Kings, couple of neutral Spanish niggas, and like 30 brothers. Yo, we got our ass with. You guys, you hear me? We got fucked up. We, we, we fought. We fought. But we got beat the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of, I got beat the fuck up, son. My whole eye was closed. You know what I'm saying? Police came. I, I, I was a squad. They saved the day, whatever, whatever. And they separated all of us. You feel me? But I ain't had that much longer to go home. So I hear from that. Probably took me like a week or two. And then I was out. The, and, 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 and by that time, you know what I'm saying? I'm out the door. I'm going home. You know what I mean? That was my first, that was my first experience. My moms picked me up. I went back to the Bronx. You would have thought I learned my lesson. You heard, but my story get crazy after that, son. My story get crazy after that. I was home for a year. Within that year, I went back to the island four times. On the fourth time, they sent me up north. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to leave it right there. That's my whole experience. My first experience going to Rikers Island, bro. You know, this is therapy for a lot of people out there and they get to explain the roots of where their life went wrong. You feel what I'm saying? Whether it be their parents was on drugs or they was in the streets raising themselves as kids. Like, you didn't win unless you just made a transition from that into something positive. So if you want to get talking about you won and you still in the streets, you a loser.
you ain't win unless you took that and you took all that pain and strife and that and, 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 and all the trials and tribulations you've been through. You took that and you turned it into something positive, then you won. That's the victory right there. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I was telling my. This call was from a federal prison. Yeah, Ma, what's your sign? I think we compatible. Damn, I'm mad at you. After you done look like a princess, how I'm gonna show another girl interest? Impress you move so lady. Take a ride with this New York baby. Yeah, LAZ, man, I make hit songs. Been making hit songs, man. You heard you wanna collab with me? Send me an email at the Gem Pop LLC at gmail.com or send me a DM on Instagram at Real St. Laz. You heard? Moving out here, man. That's a whole fact. Z Lord. And if you need that music promo, brand promo, whatever it is you pushing, man. My price is right like Bob Barker. Get at me.